The crisis which is in Africa today is because of philosophical, ideological, strategic, economic mistakes, which we have been talking about since the 1960s. This is not an accident. When you see the crisis in many of the African countries, the, the collapse of states, we predicted this in the 1960s. Philosophical, ideological, strategic mistakes. I don't have time to uh, amplify each one. But I was very happy to hear the President of the World Bank talking about prosperity instead of profiteering. These were his own words. That's what I picked. This has been the problem. Aid has been for profiteering. This has been the problem. Now, the World Bank people and other groups have been talking of sustainable development. <clears throat> Even in your documents, I have seen that, those words there sustainable development. I am now going to be 80 years old. I have never seen sustainable pregnancy. That a woman is pregnant this year, the pregnancy continues next year, three years, four years, it never happens. In life, Pregnancy develops sustainably within the womb of the, of, the, of, the, of the woman, quantitatively. The baby is growing bigger and bigger. But at some stage, quantitative growth must be transformed into qualitative change. The pregnancy must become a baby. If the pregnancy remains pregnancy, the fetus will die. So therefore, I would even ask you to change those words in your documents. Africa does not need sustainable what? You could call it sustainable underdevelopment. Africa needs social economic transformation. The pregnancy must become a baby. The baby must grow and grow and become a teenager. The teenager must grow. That's what happens in life. You cannot have quantitative growth and you think you are doing anything. The, the main reason why there is no growth is because the growth factors are not funded. They are not even understood. What are the growth, growth factors? We now talk of private sector aid growth. Yes, but for the private sector to grow, what does it need? It needs low costs of production. Ministers of Finance, low costs of production. And what are the low costs of production? Number one, transport. You must have low transport costs. Where do low transport costs come from? From the railway. If you don't find the railway, how will you get low transport costs? wonderful people, 
Banco Mundial, IMF, all of this, where will low cost operation come from if you don't have a railway? I have been here for the last 64 years. I've been watching as a student leader, as a freedom fighter, now as the leader of a country. How many railways have been constructed or funded in Africa? The few that have been was by China, the Tanzania Railway to Zambia, and recently China, another one here in Kenya, and then Tanzania on their own, they are building a railway line. So, if you are talking of helping Africa, the railway, I don't want to be involved in any other what words, 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 no, please. The railway. Because if you, trans you, you fund the railway, you will have low cost of transport, and you can, pr you can produce products which are cheap, which can be bought in the world. So you audit how much funding all these billions you are talking about, how, how much of, of it has gone to the railway. Audit it. The second cost pusher is electricity. If you don't find electricity and you talk about uh, sustainable development, what, what are you talking about? Private sector-led growth. Maneno too. Eh? Electricity. We must have low-cost electricity. Not exceeding five cents per kilowatt hour. That's what I insist on in Uganda. I'm tired of all these stories. These neo-colonial civil servants who have been holding us back, I have put my foot down, say, I don't want to hear those stories. And Uganda is developing, and it will develop, because I don't entertain that nonsense anymore. Borrowing for what? Capacity building. Imagine. Seminars. They, they, they call you in a, in a hotel. You eat chapati, you eat mandazi. They say that is capacity building. Capacity building should be on the ground, not just seminars. So, the second point, excellence, is electricity. The third one, those people who talk about private sector aid growth, private sector aid growth. I have been trying to borrow money for our UDB, Uganda Development Bank. A bank which funds manufacturers. No, you don't, I don't get support for that. Instead, they want me to go, my people to go to commercial banks. But commercial banks cannot give, the, no, those commercial banks are to encourage imports. Are to encourage imports. Because the only person who can borrow money and pay it back from a commercial bank is a trader who goes to China, goes to where, Dubai, brings products, sells them quickly, and pays back. So, if you are serious, I need to hear about the low cost funding for manufacturing. Not for stories, not for what, 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 no manufacturing. The, how about funding for irrigation? Because if you want to stabilize agriculture, a country like Uganda is very rich, we have got everything. But still sometimes we get some, some erraticness in the rain. So in order to stabilize, I've been trying to look for a, a loan for irrigation. I can't easily get it. Very difficult to get. A loan for seminars, very quick. Uh, 
The civil servants, what? Oh, oh, oh. But alone for irrigation, you don't see. Uh -huh. Now, finally, the loan for, the, I don't know the situation in other African countries, and I don't have time to talk for a long, I don't have, don't have opportunity to talk for long. But Uganda is a very rich country. But one of the problems we are having was that our people were outside the money economy. They were in what they call subsistence sector. They just produce for eating, produce for eating, produce for eating. So I was looking for money. Please give me money to give coffee seedlings to these fellows who are just producing for the stomach so that they can produce for the stomach but also produce for the pocket so that they join the money economy. You cannot imagine that by 90, 20, 2013, a few years ago, 68% of the homesteads in Uganda we are still in the subsistence sector, in the non-money economy. You audit your countries. What is the situation? What is the percentage of the people? So I had now to use my own money because I couldn't get, I couldn't borrow money from anybody. The, the loans are for capacity building for. I don't know. Sometimes they give for ICT. But ICT, ICT is a communication system, mainly. What are you going to communicate on that communication? How are you? Good morning. And you think that is communication. Why don't you have ICT linked with agriculture? Linked with industry? Oh, now the digital, digital, digital. Are you eating computers? Have I seen anybody eating computers? Just running up and down. Maneno too. So I was insisting that all these Ugandans must be in the money economy. 2013, not, not long ago, 68% of Ugandans were outside the money economy because Uganda is a very rich country. A fool can survive there. In other countries, fools die. But in Uganda, fools can survive there. They just eat. You, the, 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 he stays with his, his, his brothers. He eats. He goes from there to the, to the sister. He eats. He's not earning anything, but he's eating. So we said, no, everybody must be involved in the, in the money economy. We couldn't, we couldn't get any support for that. But we funded it ourselves. Each year, we spend about $300 million of our own to, to, to make these villagers join the money economy by producing for the, for, the, for the stomach, but also for the pocket. And from 2013, I was now told that for the first time, 61% uh, of the people are in the money economy, of the homesteads. It is only 39% that are still out. You imagine those are still there, just eating, no, no money. So therefore, this meeting is, then you, you get your, your neo-colonial civil servants, they talk of import support. Imagine there is money for import support. Import support, import support. Uh -huh. The governor writes to me, reports, we have got import cover for so many months. But I don't want to import, I want to export. Why don't you tell me about import substitution? 
and export promotion instead you are telling me of import support money so money is available for him to, to to become more dependent so so I'm, I'm very glad to hear what the now finally the cars which we told our people about in the 1960s we told them part of the wars we fought in Uganda we are to get rid of the neo-colonial groups which were there which were stopping us from thinking we are to get rid of them by force but one of the problems was Africa producing raw materials Materiel primaire, they call it in Francais. Materiel primaire. Raw materials. Imagine coffee. The global value of coffee is $460 billion. All the coffee producing countries of the world, Brazil, us, all this, we only get 25 billion of that. Out of the 460 billion, uh, after, uh, the, the, the coffee producing countries get 25 billion. And Africa gets only 2.5 billion. 900 million of that comes to Uganda because Uganda produces a lot of coffee. A country like, like uh, Germany, which has no coffee, earns 65 billion dollars from coffee so this this i sell a kilo of coffee good, good grade coffee 2.5 dollars somebody in london would get 241 dollars from that one kilo Okay, there are, there are other costs on the way. I don't want, I don't want to, because he has, he's, the, he's the owner of a restaurant and so on. But coffee roasting, coffee roasting, coffee grinding, coffee packing must happen here in Africa. It must happen at source. The shirt I'm putting on is Ugandan cotton. I don't put on foreign clothes. It's only the trousers I'm putting on because I can't go naked. Because they have not solved that problem for me. So, if you look at, co at, at cotton, how many job levels are there? Job levels. You grow the cotton. Okay, that, that one we do. Those, those jobs we do. We gin, gin the cotton. Kto and begu, remove the seeds. That one we do here. And we end there. When you hear all these countries which have got crisis, Burkina Faso, I don't know what, Mali, all of them are cotton growing countries. But how much textiles are they producing? They are importing textiles, I don't know from where. So, now, if you end at level two, ginning, removing the seeds, then you take the palm, you take the cotton, to cleverer people, people are clever. What when you are kiddy? Wako huko? She's up to Tajita VP. So they take the, the cotton, they spin, spinning more money, more jobs for their children. They weave more money, more jobs for their children. They put the, the print, more money, more jobs for their children. The, I, I, I looked at uh, the figures. Uganda consumes 
276 million meters of textiles each year. And that wonderful country of yours spends 880 million dollars on, on clothes. Some of them are dead people's clothes from Europe. When people die, their clothes they are sent to, to you people, to Africa. And we spend 800, all the money we earn from coffee goes back to bring dead people's clothes. But for, we have got one factory there called, called Nightir. It, 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 it produces 25 million liters. Uh, million